October 31st, 2015, 12.32 a.m. Might want to sit down with a coffee for this one. Maybe long. Maybe it is the teacher in me. Maybe it's just a therapeutic activity. But I wanted to take the time to try to explain the situation we face more fully. Free falling, hung in midair, adrift with no land in sight. I only thought this was my worst year. It is unimaginably so. This is the state of being when dealing with a traumatic brain injury. There is no neat, organized if-then flowchart. There is no real timeline. There is no plan. It is simply only one step at a time, and the results of each step determine the next from a myriad of possibilities. I hate it. It is counter to every fiber of my being, and yet it is a perfect analogy for how he, how he wants us to live, completely dependent, ask, asking only, what next, Abba? One faith step at a time. Looking beyond that is not only futile, but more overwhelming than one could possibly bear. Quote unquote, strength for today, for this step only. The brain is a wondrous and infinitely complicated organ. The best thing about how little we can pred predict about its response to trauma is that it leaves, leaves lots of room for God where we often allow science to shut him out. Lance has small bleeds in six areas of his brain. These small bleeds are believed to be an indication of axonal shearing. Brain cells are called neurons. Neurons are made up of a receiving part, dendrites, a central part, cell body, and an outputting part, axon. Neurons are connected together in this way and send information from one neuron to the next through these parts. When a shearing force occurs in the brain, the axons are stretched or torn and the communication between neurons in the brain is disrupted. Some of these damaged areas are in Lance's brainstem. The brainstem is the control center of the brain. It is in charge of all vital functions. Breathing, for example. So I beg for your prayers over that region of Lance's brain, that it would be healed and would send the signals necessary for him to breathe on his own. Earlier tonight, he had not taken any breaths, quote unquote, over the ventilator. The ventilator is moving air into, in and out of his lungs for him at a set rate. When he breathes over it, he is taking breaths of his own. Feeling completely overwhelmed with fear, I asked friends to pray specifically for that. Even so, fear consumed me, and just at the breaking point, Allison, one of our three daughters, came into the waiting area to announce that Lance had taken a few breaths while being bathed. What sweet relief. And yet, as I sit here now, watching the monitor, fear threatens to take hold. And like the father seeking healing for his son, I cry out, quote, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. This story in Mark chapter nine goes on to say that when the boy was set free, he, quote, appeared dead to all those around. Quote, but Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Here in this room, surrounded by tubes and monitors of all kinds, me being alarms, abundant medical knowledge, and even more questions, the battle line, the battle line in the mind is drawn. The reality is before me, the quote-unquote norms, the expected outcomes versus his promises and truth. We need a but Jesus moment. Many of them strung together until the miracle comes to completion. Bright hope for tomorrow. The list of hurdles he has to jump is first too long to list here, and second, completely unhealthy to truly consider. So here are the ones we face in this moment. I covet your prayers. One, Lance needs to begin to breathe on his own so they can remove the ventilator. Two, the brain swelling that God has up to this point held at bay must continue to dissipate. Days three and four are the greatest risk for increased brain swelling. We are now 56 hours into this battle, but Jesus. Three, his lung to reinflate. Four, no pneumonia, blood clots, and other complications to develop. Normally when a patient is bedridden, a blood thinner is given to protect, protect against the formation of blood clots. When there's bleeding in the brain, however, it is not safe, at least initially, to administer the blood thinner. Um, I actually did end up getting pneumonia, which exacerbated all the issues and made it even more unlikely for me to survive. Um, five, Lance needs miraculous healing of all the damaged neurons. Lastly, we have learned over the last two days of the influence Lance has had in the lives of his new friends in Tulsa. It is my prayer that God would work in such a way that not one could miss his power and the love he has for all his children. Uh, quote, Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. Isaiah 26, 8 maybe so. Uh, this quote is from my mom, Wendy Smith, uh, who posted this update to her Facebook on October 31st of 2015, just a few days after my uh, 
accent. Uh, today I want to show you the value of your life and just the, the meaning of life um, through my accent and rehab, uh, my accent and rehab, and my life after, and then I want to answer any questions you may have. Um, first I want to explain how the accident happened and what rehab was like. Second, I want to discuss what life afterwards is like. Uh, and third, I want to close by answering any questions you may have. Um, on October 28th of 2015, I had um, broken my wrists about two weeks prior, and I was at Wrist Therapy in downtown Tulsa. Uh, and as I was leaving, I was going home. I had only been driving for about a month, a month and a half, so I was pretty new at driving. Uh, someone was in my blind spot, I was, I was merging onto the highway, they took me home and I hit the clip their car, lost control, and wrapped my car around a pole. Um, I was immediately unconscious in a coma for three weeks, and um, so that's basically how it happened. Uh, now I wanna transition into what, what rehab was like. Sorry. Um, my first memory, actually, after I got uh, discharged from ICU at, at a hospital called St. Francis in Tulsa, um, was going, going from being transported in an ambulance from there to Baylor Institution of uh, Rehabilitation in Dallas, Texas. Um, I spent about a, about a month there, and then after that I went to Center for Neuron Skills, or Neuro Skills, excuse me, uh, in Irving, Texas, and um, all that was really intense uh, because the therapists work, work, worked me as hard as possible um, to try and ensure that I had the best quality of life possible after. Um, now that I've told you all about my accident, uh, I want to explain just what my mindset is after after experience all of that, and experiencing the miracle. Um, and I just wanna talk to you all about the value of life. Um, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not per perish but have eternal life. Uh, I'm sure many of you know this verse well, but I wonder how many of us know the magnitude of that. Um, for God so loved the world, He loves you. Um, many of you, some of you, have kids, and I'm sure you love them more than you love anyone in the world. And I want to put this into today's context. So imagine a father with a perfect son, without a blemish. Um, he gives him up for you. Uh, he knew. He knew we would turn his back on him. Uh, he knew we would slander his name. He knew some some of us, not particularly all, but some people out there, dedicate their lives to turning people against him. And yet, yet he died on a cross for our sins, and I don't understand it, and I can't explain it. Um, uh, you're in my life are more valuable than either of us could possibly understand. Our lives were purchased by the blood of the Son of God. You cannot put a price on that. Do something with your life that matters, because your life does matter. Um, and it can be taken away in an instant. It's so precious. Um, with all of that said, I now want to give everyone an opportunity to ask any questions about my accent or about anything that I've talked about. Um, <coughs> so, take it away. It's not, it's not a, it was a traumatic uh, event in my life, but it's not like it makes me cry every time I think about it. Uh, so I'm open to questions, I'm open to talking about it. Um, but it's just, it's miraculous. 93% uh, of people with a classical coma scale three, which is what I had, 93% die. And I had pneumonia as well, so that increases the, the chances. And like, I, I don't understand why God did it. Just like John three sixteen says, he died for us when he when he knew we would turn his back on him. Um, unconditional. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. unconditional love. Anyone would else? You, would you say you think about it often, or would you say that you're um, 
more grateful and living in the present? It depends. Uh, I think about it when uh, I need a reminder of just God's love and God's mercy for me. Um, but I definitely, like more so now than in the past, I, I, I definitely live in the present. I live like every day is my last, not in the sense that I, I do whatever I want, um, but I want to do something valuable. I want to affect people. I want to, I want to impact people um, because it can be taken away like that. And I just encourage all of y'all to do the same. Um, well, so I was, I don't want to brag, but I was pretty good at baseball before. And I wanted to play in college, and I would have had the opportunity. Um, so in that sense, I'm not. Like, I, when I came back, a bunch of doctors told me that I shouldn't play. Uh, and finally, we got a doctor that said yes, and I just wasn't near good enough or as good as I was, and it was so frustrating. Um, but, I mean, you, you've seen me, and you know, like, I'm a pretty, pretty fully functioning guy. Um, so in that sense, yes, I've been about as full of recovery as possible. Anyone else, or is that it? Yeah, what was your interactions with your family like in the upcoming months after your um, in rehab? Man, I'm so lucky. Like, I'm so dang blessed. My family means more than the world to me. And um, they love me. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's Ross just... There are a lot of tears. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you.